Hey guys, today we're talking about femtech, like temp drop, maybe aura ring, femometer, things like that. And if it is valuable or reasonable to use them during recovery and when it is definitely appropriate to use them. So I just got the version two of the temp drop, which is why I am bringing this up today. I have been using version one for a while and I wanted to get the latest one because it was it just seemed fun um and this is a this is something that comes up a lot i get a lot of questions where people are like hey should i get this um and usually i say no but there are instances where i say yes um and some more recent ones that have come up for me um with client work so let's talk about it this is the latest temp drop i got it in the mail just last week i've been using it for a whole week um, and I really enjoy it. It's been helpful for me because A, I do have a period, I've recovered, um, and B, I have a toddler who half of the week makes me get up in the middle of the night, go to her bed, sleep in her bed, and I'm just like, I ended up being totally unable to take oral, oral temperatures, which is ideal. So the reason taking a manually taken oral temperature is ideal, especially for someone in HA recovery is because exactly what that oral reading is, sorry, there's a dog drinking. Hey, is exactly what that oral reading is, um, helps us understand exactly where a client's estrogen, metabolism, thyroid, energy intake, energy in, energy out, exhaustion. It helps us really understand exactly where they're at because a lot of the research and science that backs the fertility awareness method in general, which is what all these apps are based on, is based on temperatures that were taken orally. So most, if not all, femtech that is taken in a different way. So the temp drop is worn on your arm. The aura ring is worn um, on your finger, etc. you know. Um, those are not oral they're taking a different temperature so they read differently so if this is the inside of my arm it's always going to be a lower temperature than an oral is this means um i don't have as much insight into whether or not i'm actually in good fighting shape the only thing this is able to do for me is track patterns um, and help identify ovulation post ovulation which phase i'm in um, and how many days each of those phases are my overall period length. So I'm not really getting any insight into am I eating enough, am I resting enough, um, outside of whether or not the phases of my cycle are appropriate. Now for someone in HA that you don't have phases of your cycle, we do have our clients who have HA use the fertility awareness method. It helps us gauge if the changes they're making in their recovery are actually paying off? Are they getting us close to recovery? So someone usually coming in might be starting with a very low temperature base because their estrogen is low, their metabolism is shot, the whole thing. So as we start making changes and seeing them improve, uh, we're gonna start seeing improvements in that base temperature range. That's generally not gonna happen as easily with something like this. Um, so, if you're able to do oral temperatures and you're in recovery, that's gonna be better for you. There are instances where um, someone who doesn't have an ideal menstrual cycle can, can use this. Um, if you're just trying to improve the length of a phase, you don't care necessarily about the temperatures, you know they're good, they've been good for a while, um, you can absolutely track your phases with this. Um, you, of course, like me, if you're cycling, you're trying to conceive or just avoid conception, this is going to be fine because you are using cervical mucus as well and you're just trying to avoid the fertile window or you're trying to aim for the fertile window depending on your goal. So for those people, it's absolutely appropriate. As well, perhaps someone on HRT. So I have a client um, who had premature premature ovarian insufficiency, which is different to HA, but still causes amenorrhea. Um, and we were working on that, and she ended up going on HRT. And 
I did determine that based on her lifestyle factors that if oral temperatures was just a pain for her or too difficult for various reasons, like getting up at different times or inconsistent sleep, things like that, um, wearing one of these might be sufficient because when someone is on HRT, the HRT is really, it's impacting what we're seeing. We're seeing their temperatures potentially rise artificially or not rise at all, but they're still getting other types of symptoms or other types of benefits from taking HRT. Side note, definitely not something that is recommended for people with HA. I'm just saying if you're on it, you know, a lot of what you're doing is hard to track and kind of redundant anyways for HA. So my client with POI, um, this might be appropriate for her because she's just pretty much just trying to track did she ovulate, yes or no? At this phase, the quality of the ovulation, meaning the temperature, what it looked like, um, is less valuable to us than whether or not there was a actual temperature shift, yes or no. I'm hoping I'm not losing you all here. If you're not familiar with the fertility awareness method, this is probably going in over your head. But um, if you're listening and you're like, oh, that's interesting, I have HA and I don't know about using the fertility awareness method, we do have a mini course um, that also comes with our HA Society membership. So you could go in there and learn a hell of a lot about this. So that's why I recommend it for, let's talk about the temp drop version one or two. It looks almost exactly the same. This is just a different color. I have it here. This is the band for the old one. Probably got a bit of my sweat marks on it. This is the new one. They're the same thing. Um, and the tracker looks the same too, and the app is the same. So in terms of genuine differences, um, I'm not really noticing them yet, but perhaps this one is looking more reliable um, and like perhaps it can get a bit more valuable data early on than this one takes to you have to kind of use it for a while, like a month or so really, before it's getting like super duper accurate. Um, but I'm finding it helpful right out the gate. So there's that. Um, but yeah, I think that they're both pretty similar. Um, I just get the new one if you can, because it's going to, they're probably going to be improving the app around it. And because I feel like this one's battery died for me pretty quickly and I'm hoping they've made changes with this one. I'll let you guys know if there's an update on that. Um, but all in all so far, they're actually quite similar. So if you can get the newest one, do so because I think there's gonna be some longevity improvements with it, but the app is the same. So at the time of recording this, they're still trying to get rid of the stock of the first one. So if you want to save like kind of a substantial amount, maybe just get the first one because they're kind of going to do the same thing. So there's that. Now, I prefer the temp drop at this stage over um, like the aura ring because the app is more effective um, and because I, I, I mean, I like literally just personally enjoy the ritual of putting these on and I don't want to wear a ring all the time. I just, I'm not, I'm just, I'm not going to wear it. <laughs> but some people do. So that's a really, really personal choice. But I've been using the temp drop. I really, really like it. Um, there are some other products that we are actually looking at and testing and I'll keep you guys updated that are coming from other companies. But for right now, that's, this is the one that I'm vibing for my clients and you it is most appropriate for you to use this post recovery or if you are somebody who does shift work or like me and you have a toddler and you're just not going to be able to get oral thermometer temperatures you're just not gonna be able to do it that means if you're in HA and you have this the value you're getting from it is identifying ovulation and the phases of your cycle and that's okay if that's all you can get because you 
do shift work or you have a kid or something like that, this is the best you can do. Great, you're doing amazing. You're doing so good. What you could do is wear this, have a thermometer next to your bed for the once a week or whatever that you manage to get an oral temperature, just to check in on what your baseline maybe is. But yeah, no stress. If this is the best you can do, it's gonna help identify if you ovulated, yes or no. It's gonna create a space for you to track mucus observations, all that good stuff. So I like it for that reason. Um, we do have a code. I believe you can use um, the code that is up on the screen to get a solid discount. And a temp drop lets you stack discounts. So if they have a current discount going, you can stack this one on top. So massive deal. So if you want to go get the first version, you're really, really going to save. Um, or if you want to get the newest one at a bit of it, like a solid discount, that's a great option. So go to the website in the show notes, use this code and try it out for yourself. If you have any questions about whether or not it's appropriate, um, please let me know below. Happy to answer and discuss about using Femtech. Um, if you have other products you want to see reviewed, also happy to do that. And um, yeah, I was going to say something else, but it's gone. So we'll see you guys next week. I hope this was helpful. Bye. Oh, you know what I'm working on? I don't promise yet this week, but potentially the next week. I'm doing um, the requested by you guys video about an update on my training, what it looks like um, to give you a bit more context into the video about what I've been eating as an athlete, show you what my training load looks like at the moment. Okay, so subscribe for that. Bye.